What's going on guys? Beastly Gamer here. Welcome to the channel. Today's video is about the Nintendo Switch. We'll see this thing in a couple of weeks. I know there's a lot of people really excited about it. I was initially very excited about the potential of a handheld Nintendo console that's able to pump out games like The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild. After Nintendo's January uh, press conference, or their press reveal of the console, in the news of what this thing was actually going to be coming out with, I lost a lot of enthusiasm behind this console. I'm just being honest. I like to be totally honest with you guys. I feel at this point that having it on day one is not really a priority for me. I know that The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild is going to be a great game, but other than that, there really isn't anything coming out to the Nintendo Switch and, and, and anytime soon that has me really amped to play. And so I'm probably going to get one. You know, I'm, I'm actually feeling a little bit better about not pre-ordering at this point. But there's still lots of questions about the Nintendo Switch, what it's going to be capable of doing, uh, the different UI and different capabilities of the console itself. Will it be like an iPad? Will it be like a 3DS? What exactly is this thing going to be? I came across a pretty interesting article that shines a, a pretty big spotlight on what the Nintendo Switch is actually trying to be and potentially what it can't do. I'll drop a link in the description. The Nintendo Switch really doesn't want to be your new iPad. The Nintendo Switch is out in just a couple more weeks. And yet, every day we get more fascinating tidbits about exactly what it will and won't do. The latest news is that the Switch won't ship with a web browser, which is rather unusual for a portable screen-based device in 2017, as even the 3DS has one. But it joins the similarly strange news that the Nintendo Switch does not have the ability to access video apps like Netflix or Hulu at launch either. It's certainly possible that the Switch could get those things eventually, but either they were cut as Nintendo focuses on other priorities to make sure the system is out this March before its fiscal year ends, or once again, this is another purposeful decision to try and separate itself from iPads or other tablets. The current messaging about the Switch is becoming pretty clear at this point. This is a home console you take on the go, not a replacement for a handheld, not a competitor for tablets. This is a device that plays games, and that's all it needs to be. If that's true though, is that all the Switch needs to be? Or will the lack of such basic functionality come back to bite it if it's not added in short order? I'm not exactly sure, but the interesting thing is aspects of the Switch can't actually function without the player having a smart device on hand, namely for online play, which will have aspects like the partying system and voice chat running through the mobile app. But I also don't think there's a point in Nintendo going all out and trying to make the Switch a true tablet with access to a full app suite. As nice as it would be if the Switch was essentially an iPad that played fully fledged Nintendo games games, it was never going to be realistic for the system to actually achieve that. Tablets are much more expensive, are an entirely different class of product, and that would go against Nintendo's desire to be in essentially their entirely own category with the Switch. Furthermore, like it or not, Nintendo will already be battling the PS4 and Xbox One at home, and is actually in competition with its own 3DS to some degree when it comes to gaming on the go, at least until it's discontinued. They are also doing battle with tablet games. But I don't think that that conflict has to escalate to Nintendo actually trying to make the Switch into a tablet itself. The message is that if you want to play lesser games and watch streaming video, keep the tablet you probably already own. But if you want to play some of the biggest and best video games on the market as you travel, that alone is worth spending $300 on a fully dedicated gaming device like the Switch. Still, there are some unknowns and some odd decisions. I'm still finding it hard to wrap my head around this idea that the key features of the online service will be run through a phone app, as that just does not seem like a good idea for many reasons. And the lack of a web browser specifically might prove problematic if the Switch is trying to connect to one of many Wi-Fi sources that require some sort of browser-based login, though perhaps they have a way of getting around that. The Switch is a risk. It's always been, given that it's trying to compete in so many different spaces against many other different devices at the same time. I do agree that this should not be a Nintendo tablet, nor treat it as such, but I do think it's going to be a tough long-term battle given its competition, and yeah, maybe a Netflix app would help just a little. I think that the Switch, it's its really a big conundrum to me, it's like a big, it's like Nintendo's question mark box. I have no idea how well this thing is going to do. The gamer inside of me, this old man who grew up with Nintendo, I want them to do well. I want them to do well so, so badly. But it seems like if, if this information is actually true, which it more than likely is, it's on Forbes, they have made some really crazy decisions about the way to roll out this console. The abilities and inabilities of the console are very dubious. People are questioning why in the hell you have to use a phone app 
for party chat why why is it not included in the system if they don't have a web browser that's going to be uh, that's not really a good thing everything has a web browser every type of technology that's come out in the last five years has a web browser why would it not have one and of course if people have the nintendo switch as their home console or on the go the ability to hook up netflix and hulu and streaming apps and services to the Nintendo Switch is going to be imperative. People are going to have that. It's really a way of life. People use Netflix, Hulu, YouTube, these types of apps every single day in American life and more than likely around the world. And I think the Nintendo has to have that. They need to have it on day one. It's going to be, it's going to be bad. People are going to get their hands on this thing. They're going to play The Legend of Zelda and see very little reason to turn it on anymore. Nintendo could be hurting themselves very badly. I really want Nintendo to do well with the Switch. I think that it has a lot of potential. I think they've had a lot of time to roll out some real meaningful games. But unfortunately, they kind of they, they, they missed that mark. They really did. Nintendo dropped the ball. I know there's a lot of big Nintendo fans out there who don't think so. But you have to be realistic. If they've been working on this console for a number of years, and the only game that's notable that's coming out at launch is The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild, they really, really missed the mark. This is Nintendo we're talking about. They've got so many meaningful IPs that they could have been working on to get out with this console, and they just truly, truly dropped the ball. I hope they do well. I hope this thing is capable of all the stuff that this article said it's not. Because if it's not, it's going to fall in comparison to phones that came out in 2012. You know, they've really got to pull this thing up and they've got to make it great. You guys let me know what you think in the comment section below. Do you think Nintendo Switch is going to be competing with iPads and tablets and phones? Or do you think that they're going to carve out their own niche? How do you feel about the possibility that the Switch will not have a web browser? Do you think that it needs to have Hulu and Netflix installed on day one? Let me know what you think. Be sure to give a thumbs up, guys. Show support for the channel. Join the Facebook group. Follow me on Twitter. And you can support the channel at BeastlyGamer.com. I'm the Beastly Gamer, and I'll see you guys next time. Oh